I love stories <laughs> like that. Now, six years ago, Matt King played his first game of professional rugby. It was also his last. He was paralysed from the neck down. But he didn't just sit at home in Bedfordshire watching the world go by. He was determined to rebuild his life. Matt has just graduated with a first-class degree in law and he's already landed a job with a top law firm in London. Jonathan Park has been to meet him. Winner of the Rutledge Cavendish Prize, winner of the Hertfordshire Law Society Prize and winner of the University Prize, Matthew Robert King. One of the first thoughts when I was hurt and I knew how badly I'd injured myself it was that my life was over. When you're, before you're affected by spinal injury, you don't know what opportunities there are. Um, I never thought I'd go back to school or, or be where I am now. Five years ago, Matt was just 17. The life as he knew it was over. He'd suffered a serious injury in his first professional game of rugby, which left him paralysed from the neck down. He said if he couldn't use his body, he'd use his mind. He has, to devastating effect. Matt's just received a first-class honours degree in law. His achievements are first class with or without the disability um, and I think that's what you get from Matt. Um, he's never asked for anything extra. Um, he's just been an absolutely hard-working, dedicated student from the word go. And similar qualities were on show two years ago when Matt made history in the Big Apple, becoming the first person to complete a marathon with his level of disability. For Matt's next chapter, it's a legal practice course at the University of Hertfordshire. But then London's calling. He's landed a training contract with one of the biggest law firms in the capital where he wants to specialise in personal injury. There's people out there who don't know the legal rights and have an accident similar to my, to, to my own and just think that's, that, that's the, the lot life has dealt them. But you know, in some cases there are, there are ways that they can, can be helped and in, in a lot of the cases the people really need the money which, which a, a claim will, will give them just to pay for their, their care and to make their life, their life a little easier. Whenever you mention the word inspiration to Matt, he gets embarrassed, but that's what he is. From Stoke Mandeville to New York to a top London law firm. Jonathan Park, BBC Look East. That's fantastic, isn't Terrific it? story, yeah. Now, you wouldn't normally consider a couple in their 80s an obvious threat. So when a great-grandmother and her husband were approached by a security guard recently at a shopping centre in Cambridge, they were a bit taken aback. That's probably an understatement because Peggy Harnden was stopped because she was wearing a hood. With a walking stick each and needing an arm to hold on to, Peggy and Desmond Harden are not really a force to be reckoned with. But a security guard at the Grand Arcade in Cambridge thought differently. With the centre's no-hood policy firmly in his mind, he spotted Mrs Harden's fluffy-edged hoodie amongst the crowds and demanded she take it down, leaving the couple, who are both 84, more than a little bemused. I get a bit nervous over young people with hoods or anything on their heads and uh, you do get a bit frightened but uh, I don't think I could have if I'd been doing a robbery I don't think I could have run far away and soon catch me up I think they should do it with the youngsters but not with somebody who's on the stick and <laughs> what do they think we're going to attack them with a stick or what but you know it's it's really absolutely ridiculous in a statement, the Grand Arcade said, We apologise for any stress this may have caused. We're reviewing our policy to ensure the safety and well-being of all our customers. We are trying to make contact with Mrs Harden directly to apologise. Mrs Harden's moment as a security risk has made it to national and local media. She and her husband are not planning another shopping trip for a while. With their record, it's best to keep a low profile. Anna Todd, BBC Look East in Sawston, Cambridgeshire. Well, now the return of Look East Unplanned. This is how it works. Mike Liggins gets up very early to appear on the breakfast programme at one of our BBC local radio stations. Listeners then are given the chance to tell him where to spend his day. This morning he started his day at BBC Radio Northampton for the first of Christmas Unplanned. I'm on Bernie Keith's programme with his dog, Riley. <laughs> Happily, Riley's bark is worse than his bite. Bernie is one of the funniest men on the radio, but Riley is the star of the show. 
good. And you look, he's a showbiz dog. He does impressions. He's doing Alistair Darling at the moment. Look at that. <laughs> he does Dennis Healy. They're all kind of eyebrow-based, his impressions. Yeah. He does an old Gallagher as well that's quite good. He's good, isn't he? Sid and Nadine have uh, called in about an ice rink um, that's been installed for Christmas. Right. Um, that's near Sywell. The Radio Northampton listeners are in top form and come up with some great suggestions. Well, we have some uh, really good suggestions, uh, but I think we're going to try Wicksteed Park, where they've got a, a 50s and 60s style Christmas show. In a very unplanned moment, I get stopped by Northamptonshire Police, who are doing their Christmas drink driving campaign. The breathalyzer test reads zero. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, it's all right. At Wicksteed Park, the coach parties are arriving for lunch. It's a theme park in the summer, but they also put on shows. Northampton Age Concern are here, Red Lodge Good Neighbours, a couple of coach loads from Peterborough, but I tag along with the Lake and Heath over 60s. <laughs> That's got nothing in it. Your hat's in it. Oh, is it? Good. Yeah. Do you watch Look East? Yes. No. <laughs> No, she doesn't. She oh, watches, yes, she does. She watches Anglia, apparently. <laughs> Backstage, the small cast is getting ready for the show. Music from the 50s and 60s <laughs> with a little Christmas flavour. What's, what are the audience like? Are they kind of appreciative? Yeah, they're good. I mean, obviously, you get hit and miss sometimes. They're a bit quiet, they just want to watch. But because it's Christmas season at the moment, they're all up for a party, so it's really good. Um, somebody's lost a walking stick. <laughs> Anybody? Anyway. Before the show, there are some announcements and a Christmas quiz. What song did Peter, Paul and Mary have a Christmas hit with in 1969? But it's the show they've come to see and it doesn't disappoint. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to eat a Christmas dinner with the Lake and Heath over 60s but that's the beauty of Unplanned. Well done, and happy Christmas to all at Wicksteed Park. <laughs> Look, we love those lady, that lady's earrings. Yeah, very nice, aren't they? All the way from yeah. Lake and Heath as well. I know. Yeah. Tomorrow, Mike will be on The Breakfast Show at BBC Three Counties Radio at 7.30 in the morning. You could do with some earrings like that, couldn't you? I would love some earrings like that. I don't often wear them. Susie's got some lovely new ones on today. But, yes, I need something a bit flashing and sparkly, I think, for the festive period. I have to see what I can do. Now, we're going to start the forecast with some beautiful shots of the sun rising over the Norfolk Broads this morning. Now, of course, boating on the Broads at this time of year can be a magical experience, but the winter brings its own hazards, which is why the Broads Authority has brought out a new leaflet with lots of top tips on how to stay safe. Conditions can change quite rapidly, so we're asking people to consider what clothing they may take. Ice can be particularly dangerous, decks are slippy, uh, landing places are slippy, so it is just mainly to consider those, take extra care in those circumstances. So a beautiful day for boating on the broads, but right across the region, 